The Prox system known as the Emerald Necklace is widely admired for its design and engineering, originally by Frederick Law Olmsted. Both elements figure in the city's most recent work around Jamaica Pond in what's known as the Pathways Project. The project also includes a dedication of the boathouse, acknowledging the importance of a community advocate for the pond, Christine Cooper. To tell us about the project and her contributions over the many years as a fellow advocate, the founder and president of the Jamaica Pond Project, Jerry Wright, uh, thank you very much for being with us, Jerry. Well, great to be here. Jerry, I want to go back to when uh, you and Christine got this all going. Uh, what was the pond like in those Well, days? it was the late 70s when I met her, and she had just returned uh, from Hawaii, uh, where her husband had been in the Army, and she was with a young daughter. And uh, she wrote some poetry, and she dropped it off for me after we had a walk at the pond. And right away, I was gripped by the personality that sort of was putting poetry together uh, with the experience at the pond. And so we met occasionally, and then we said, this place is just a mess. I mean, there was glass around and continually paper thrown all over the place, bottles around. And so after about two or three months, I said, why don't we get a small group together and pick some of this up? And so that's how it all started. And then we had a regular group that started to pick up the trash. And then we got the attention of the uh, commissioner uh, of Parks and Recreation. And it came to a time that uh, they were debating what to do and they were trying to get somebody from the outside. The boathouse had been closed for about 10 years. And um, they were thinking of getting the Boys and Girls Club. And I said, wait, why do you, I think Christine Cooper is the person to be at the center of this a community person. And he looked at me and said, yeah, but she can't do this. I said, wait a minute, what do you mean? You're telling us we can't do this here in Jamaica Plain as citizens? And finally he relented and said, well, I'll give you a chance, but if you, if you don't succeed, you're gonna drown in Jamaica Pond. I mean, he was adamant, but the rest is history. Christine came in, she cleaned things up, she got some plumbers to go upstairs and start the bathrooms, which were on the second floor. People got so excited and said, we can't have the bathrooms on the second floor. So we motivated $750,000 and they renovated the entire boathouse. And Christine would be there. Sometimes she was there every day through of the season, a couple of times right through the winter with hot chocolate. So Christine Cooper is really the heartbeat of being at the pond and the creation of the project. I, I, I have memories even of the early 70s about how dilapidated it was and I remember seeing Christine out there and wondering who is this person, why is she doing this? Uh, but the city itself at that time, it was not an easy time, the city had other things on its plate, so what was it like getting through to the city to say a lot of people here really care about this? Well, it, it took not convincing in a conversation. My, my thing has always been take action, create something, Make something work. And so this is how we began. And then uh, Christine says, well, listen, why this summer, uh, let's try to get some of the rowboats back. So that's how the summer program began. And then after that was successful, Christine was a sailor. And so I said, well, let me go down and so let's get a couple of sailboats. And soon, within five years, there were 12 sailboats there. And Christine was running a summer program for kids. And so we got some money and we were able to hire uh, six counselors. And so that began the sailing project. Of course, it makes me wonder about how that kind of momentum feeds into other things. I mean, eventually you get like the lantern parade at Halloween. That never existed before? No, well, that was an idea that uh, Femke, Femke Rosenbaum, yeah, she, yeah. she was the started uh, Wake Up the Earth. And I went to the Wake Up the Earth and uh, I was impressed with her as an individual. And so I said, why don't we meet at the boathouse? And so she came down and sat down with Christine and myself. And uh, I always, I thought of a festival of light. Uh, Femke sort of said, well, let's have a parade. And I thought to myself, well, that'll sell better. And it went from, uh, and I've been at every one of these uh, through all the years, and it became, the first time we had about 36 people there. 
This past year, we had two nights, 1,500 people each night. And we, the BSO came into uh, Jamaica Plain as a community to provide music. And Femke made the, con the contacts, and so they were set up in three different places. You know, the French horns, the trombones, and the wonderful flutes. I mean, it was just magical. Well, you, you got more people to come out there and engage with the pond, uh, different kinds of people at a time when people in Boston were not as comfortable with neighborhood change. What, what's the importance about getting all of those people in one place doing something they really enjoy? Because this is, isn't this what Olmsted was after all along? Well, Olmsted was clearly interested in getting people into the park. And the first thing he did, he realized that he wasn't going to get things ready in the summertime. So he prepared for ice skaters. And the first Sunday they said there were about 100. Then there were 500. Then they said down there at Central Park there were 1,000 ice skaters. Then when the spring arrived, he had the idea, let's bring in some music. And this is what we've done at Jamaica Pond. We have concerts in the evening. And it's powerful to be in nature, but his primary goal is for health for people. And first, you have the trees. And secondly, you have the magical design that he created. And at Jamaica Pond, he simply said, it's naturally designed. I don't have to do anything. But when you walk around the park, you're grasped by something. And one of his things he said, for me most importantly, in many ways, every time a person walks into a park, the most important gift is a sense of enhanced freedom. And for me, this is where we all find our places where we can get ourselves together so that we can go back into the trenches and declare what we feel is the right path to take especially in today's world where there's so much conflict. So for me, the centering beauty of Olmsted is the natural world. And that's where we're now creating something in his tradition, uh, an education program, because he is very interested in education. So we have an education program which is connecting history, art, and science. And this is something we hope that people in their own backyards can begin to feel it. This is BNN News, and we're talking with Jerry Wright from the Jamaica Pond Project. Uh, Jerry, aside from the dedication of the Boathouse to Christine Cooper, there is a Pathways Project here. There is work in these pathways. Uh, how does this make a difference to how people can enjoy the pond in the adjacent areas? Well, the work they've done is phenomenal. And credit goes to uh, Mayor Walsh and to Chris Cook when he was the commissioner. But the motivating force uh, from the community was Matt O'Malley. And this is where citizens, uh, they can go to City Hall, but you need somebody within the structure. And that's what sometimes people don't get. You need to work through the structure and build up support. And Matt O'Malley has become, uh, to me, a remarkable leader in the environmental field. And this, for me, is where I'm so excited about Jamaica Plain and the pond because he was able to get $4.7 uh, million available and they've done extraordinary work. They've done things you don't really realize. They took some wires down that were going from the boathouse to, and they weren't really used, but they were used on occasion. So they put them underground. So the small changes that the architects have made, both from the city side and from the side of the contractor. And there's a, a new access to the pond on, on the Brookline side. It's not in Brookline, but it's closer to Brookline. And, and there's a crosswalk there. It's, oh, yes. Yeah. No, this is something that people in the Cabot Estates have been after for years. And this is DCR. So you have, and Jeffrey Sanchez was very important in getting money for from uh, the state for both the crosswalk at Elliott Street, which was almost impossible to cross, you know, with the cars coming down the Jamaica Way and into the Arbor Way. Uh, so there's a light there, and that was done by the state. 
And then there was, a ma I called it magical, because when you go along the next to the Capitol Estates, you have some landscaping there that's just wonderful with a winding path that goes up to connect to the meadow. And up beyond the meadow, right by in the woods, is um, where there's the um, statue um, for a great uh, person who was a really, he loved the forest, and um, Francis Parkman. And for me, that's where I took pictures, walking across that meadow down to the pond, standing up the trees from the forest as they leaned over the waters, and it's mesmerizing. I've, I've seen uh, some work lately on new paths, gravel paths through the areas near Ward Pond. A lot of people say, Ward Pond, what, what are you talking about? I mean, people don't go there as much. It, before, it wasn't as interesting. Uh, lately, there have been some improvements, and I guess it, it seems to be more picturesque than I expected. Well, this work is in progress, and Ward's, and it's Olmsted Park, where Ward's Pond is, and there are five bodies of water there, including Leverett Pond. And when I first got here, this is what turned me on to Olmsted. I was doing graduate work on man-made ponds uh, in, at Cornell in, in farmland. And I got here, and I thought, what am I doing in the city? And they gave me a tour, and they said, this is a man-made pond. And that's what Leverett Pond is. And that's the beginning of where the Muddy River goes all the way down to the Charles. And of course, this is the genius of Olmsted once again, that he had to control the floodwaters that used to come in. And so he got engineers to do that. And he, he built this incredible five mile park out to Franklin Park. And they wanted to go up over Mission Hill or Parker Hill as it was called. And he said, no, we're going down the Muddy River. And they said, that's a cesspool. Olmsted said, that's why we're doing it. We're going to change that, yep. and then you'll have your park. Right. Now, of course, in, in Ward Pond, there is that boardwalk, which, if it's not new, I never noticed it before, uh, and that's a whole sort of a quiet, natural area. Oh, that, that was, I discovered that 61 years ago when I was w uh, watching ducks in the pond, and then I saw uh, something fly overhead, and I said, what in the world was that? And I said, that, could that have been a great blue heron here in the city? And of course, this was right in the city. And so I went across the road and went down there and it was this wild place. And then I walked around and I was walking and walking and all of a sudden there, 15 f feet from me, was this great blue heron standing more than three feet tall, right in the city. So finally, uh, I want to go back to uh, how you discovered the Ponies. I know Christine was an important connection for you to almost mobilize you into being a champion of the pond, but what, what, what drew you to it the first time? Well, I was invited to go to Boston University by the president of uh, the university. In fact, I just walked into the castle before coming here, and my bedroom was where there was, is a pub now. But I lived with him for four years there, and I explored I, I wanted to see the city, and I saw gulls the first week flying west. I said, what's going on? Where are they flying that way? Asked somebody, and they said, there's a pond. So that first week, I tracked down, and there was, there was Jamaica Pond. Two weeks later, I went to, out to Walden Pond. I came back, and I simply said to myself, you know, Jamaica Pond is my Walden Pond, right in the city. Thank you very much for being with us. Thank Jer you. Jerry Wright. Thank you. From the Jamaica Pond Project.